The West is open for business, but key to the transformation of the region is a river 2,000 miles in length, fed by rainfall from 31 states. Running from Minnesota to New Orleans, the mighty Mississippi. It's a lifeline, connecting the West to the outside world. If roads exist, they're muddy tracks. This is the only trade artery, the interstate, that allows the pioneers and settlers to sell the produce they've sweated over. A huge amount of goods are shipped out, but they're shipped out in the in, in this most nickel and dime way. A farmer will build a flatboat, fill it up with hogs, uh, sassafras root, ginseng root, uh, tobacco, whatever it is you grow, put it on the flatboat, use the power of the Mississippi to drift you down to sell them along the riverbank. Age 19, Abraham Lincoln makes his first trip down the Mississippi, pulling his simple raft. The current is too strong to return upstream. The primitive flatboats are simply sold as lumber in New Orleans. Farmers have to walk the 800 miles home and begin again. But on that first journey, Lincoln sees the future. A new invention which will transform the Mississippi, the Midwest, and America. The steamboat was the 19th century's time machine, just as surely as the airplane was the 20th century's time machine. It shrunk distance. By shrinking distance, it enabled commerce. Even upstream, steamboats can travel 50 miles a day, eight times faster, eight times the cargo of a raft. But they're deadly. Over half the early models explode, maiming and killing hundreds. But their number triples every decade. They make the Midwest America's economic powerhouse. Within 20 years, St. Louis alone swells from a few hundred to a population of 16,000. Over four generations, America has grown from a hundred mile wide strip of colonies on the eastern seaboard to a continental powerhouse.